Welcome to Coffee Break with Rachel V. Hill. Taking a daily look at the biggest stories in Denver sports and interacting live with you, the Coffee Break fam. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of joe, and enjoy your coffee break. Here's your host, Rachel V. Hill. Happy Monday, a weekend to forget in Colorado sports. Besides the DU's hockey team bringing home another national title, the Avalanche and the Denver Nuggets did not have spectacular weekends. That definitely impacted their playoff and seating and all, all sorts of stuff. And to talk about it, because he wrote a wonderful article over at DunderSports.com. It is a Marilat Monday as we sit down and chat. Your article, you're getting a little bit of hate for it. What? But That's surprising. Wow. Do you even read the comments? Uh, not very often. No, I mean, I, I know what they're going to say. It, it, you know, typically speaking, and it's it's usually from people who didn't read the article. Yeah, that's always what it's I can tell. It's the headlines. Tell. It's the oh, you're going after Bednar and Malone again. That's today, and I'm not. It, like if you read the article, it's like, well, what part of it do you disagree with? Yeah, and that's what you know. The the commenters typically uh, don't bother to answer that question because they don't bother to read <laughs> the thousand words that explains the headline. Yeah. So let's get into it. Okay. Michael Malone and Bednar, you essentially said, are writing the backs of great players. Well, I think we're going to find out in the postseason if that is the case, yeah. right? And, you know, a lot of this comes out uh, comes after the disappointing weekend that you talked about. I mean, the Nuggets beat the Timberwolves last week. The number one seed is theirs. All they got to go do is beat a Spurs yep. team that's lost 60 games yep. and a Grizzlies team that has 13 players on the inactive <laughs> yep. list. Like, it should have been, I know they're two road games, but they should have been gimmies. They're up 23 points in San Antonio. They yeah. find a way to blow that game. So now they're the two seed. Mm -hmm. Still in pretty good shape. The fact that they're not the three. I mean, Great. Phoenix did the Nuggets a huge favor by beating the T-Wolves. Okay. So for the three seed, you're on the road to start round two. Yep. So they're still in a pretty decent spot. But Michael Malone, let's, let's just play the hypothetical that the Avs and the Nuggets lose early in the playoffs. Okay. Start with the Avs. Could you imagine the disappointment of this town? Let's say they lose in the first round again, the Avs. In the last seven years, they've made the playoffs with Jared Bednar. Mm -hmm. That would be three first-round exits, three second-round exits, True. and one cup. Now, the cup's big, yeah. but that becomes the aberration. The norm is to just lay an egg in the playoffs six out of seven years. It's fair. With the Nuggets, it's kind of the same thing. Now, they had the bubble year, and that kind of makes things a little bit different. But they've never, with Michael Malone, won a series where they didn't have home court advantage. They never have won a series when they didn't have the better roster yeah so now they may have to go do that certainly to win an nba title they'll probably have to you figure they'll they'll get boston in the nba finals yep so can they go on the road and win at oklahoma city if they have to but let's say they lay an egg now you'll have a three-time mvp because Jokic is winning it again yep and in the three years he's won the mvp you've done nothing in the postseason mm -hmm. you've basically got to the finals and won the championship and then you're getting bounced in the first or second round, a lot of times in embarrassing fashion, four games to one to the Warriors, the 4-0 sweep to Suns and four guy, yep. all those kind of things. There have been eight guys prior to Nikola Jokic that have won three MVPs or more. Yeah. The most forgettable guy in the group is Moses Malone. Why? Because he only won one title. Fair. The rest of them, like, can you imagine if Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, all these guys had only won one, one title, yep. their coach would be fired. <laughs> Fair. So why is that not the question here if they lay an egg in the, in the playoffs? I, I think it's it's really easy afterward to say it. Yeah. I'm just getting ahead of the curve and saying it ahead of time of the pressure's on. You better go perform in the playoffs. You better show it's about you and you're an integral part of the process, not just riding the coattails of Nathan McKinnon and Nikola Jokic because we're bordering on Mm -hmm. wasting the primes of arguably the best player in the history of both franchises. Totally with you. I actually saw your tweet. I had to pull it up. Trying to remember a great coach blowing a 20-point lead against a bad team with the number one seed on the line. I'm blanking. And I remember reading this on Saturday, Saturday night, right? That was mm -hmm. when the game was. And all I could think, I was like, I get your point. I do. But that's on the players. It's on everybody, yeah. right? Like, it, 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 you can't give the credit to the coach when they win and not give the blame when he loses. You can't give the credit to the players when they win and not give the blame when they lose. Same with the quarterback, right? Like it can't be, Fair. oh, Russ was, you know, he doesn't get any credit when they win, but it's all his fault when they lose. Like yeah. it's, it's both. It's certainly on the players, you, but say. you blow a 20 point lead. Part of that's rotation. Part of that is timeout usage. Part of that is, hey, late in the game, what are you doing when you got the ball up one and you miss mm -hmm. a shot? And then, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, but is it completely on Michael Malone? No. Yeah. But it's in part on him. Is it all, all on Michael Malone if they lose in the playoffs, though? No. 
No, but you're gonna put the blame on Nicole Jokic. No, I think it's you can look at the front office. Didn't do much or if anything at the trade deadline. This this team has absolutely no depth. Best starting five in the league, but no depth at all. Mm-hmm. Nobody that you really trust coming off the bench. But yeah, it's on Michael Malone because last year, listen, they won the title. They went sixteen and four in in route to getting there. But he played the same way and the same game plan and the same eight guy rotation mm-hmm. all twenty games. Yeah, he never had to make an adjustment. I want to see him have to make an adjustment. An adjustment. I want to see him out coach someone. Who did he out coach last year? He had the better team and he had home court advantage in every round. Eric yeah, but Spolster, they still have who had the, the eight team. seed. Like they still have the better team. So are you really going to see they that? They should. We'll or will see. you finally learn actually if it was Michael Mull? It's like the Sean Payton Drew Brees conversation. Like, can Sean go out and win, right? Like, I don't think you're going to get your answer to what you're looking for until Nathan McKinnon and Jokic are done. Well, there's no definitive answer either way. Like, would Tom Brady have won all those Super Bowls without Bill Belichick? Yeah. No. It's a great discussion. But when to Tom had. went and won one in Tampa and Bill just fell on his face in <laughs> New England. I think we know who was more important. Yep. Doesn't mean either one of them would have done what they did without the other guy. Fair. But I think if we get to the end of McKinnon and Jokic and they have one title. It's a bust. It's Yes, it is. And it's also how you get to one title, right? Mm-hmm. So I pointed out the Tampa Bay Lightning. In the last nine years, they've won two cups. They've lost in the Stanley Cup final twice. They've lost in the Eastern Conference finals twice. Yeah. That's six out of nine years they were knocking on the door. Yeah. The Avs and the Nuggets haven't knocked on the door at all. Nope. They have the outlier championship, and then they've been Mm non-factors. That's my issue. Like, you should be there every single year. And, you know, I was on with with Stink and and Mike this morning, and they're like, well, you want them fired if they don't win it? It's like, no. It depends on how it goes. If the Mm -hmm. Nuggets lose in the NBA Finals to the Celtics, I'm not saying Michael Malone should be fired. If they get beat by the Lakers in the first round, Mm -hmm. probably. If it if their exit is you know they lose in seven to the Timberwolves in the in the Western Conference Finals, yeah, okay, and a couple of those games come down to an Anthony Edwards buzzer beater, sure. When you get swept by the Suns a couple of years ago, that's embarrassing. Agreed. So it it all just depends on kind of how it goes, um, and what it looks like. But we'll know it. Mm-hmm. We'll know if Michael Malone push the right buttons or not. We'll know if Jared Bednar pushed the right buttons or not. And I have questions and everybody, cause once they won it, everybody wanted a victory <laughs> lap me. It's like, Hey, this is a decade long thing here. It's not a one season kind of thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have done it once. To be great. You have to do it a few times. It's the conversation yeah. all the time about rings of, okay, well, if you only win one, one ring, can you be great? And to be honest, you can't. They both have the MVP on the roster yeah, this year. You have to win multiple. You should win a championship or, or, we should be sitting here saying, man, one bad bounce and they lost in seven in the Western Conference yeah. Finals. Okay, fine. But if the if the Avs do what they did last year and get bounced in the first round. Which they might. Winnipeg's a really solid team. And they don't have home ice. So it's that would be a flop. Yeah. Is there an asterisk, though, on the Kraken series because of Val? They probably no. would have won that if he would have been out there. Let's they still be had three of the seven best players in the in the league on their roster. McKinnon played, McCarr played, Rantanen played. I, I mean, like how much of an embarrassment of riches do you have to have in order to be held accountable as the coach? Like you have, you know, we heard this and, and sort of the whole Michael Malone thing started with me, I don't know, three or four years ago. And it was heading into a playoff series against the Blazers. Mm-hmm. They were Nuggets were the three seed. The Blazers were the six. And I'm like, they need to win this. And I think this, I'm going off the top of my head. I think that's what it, they should be picked to win this. And all these guys that were on the war room with me were like, no, they can't yeah. possibly win this series. I mean, they don't have Jamal. It was right after Jamal got hurt, hurt in April against the Warriors. I'm like, listen, I'm not saying they should win the NBA title, but they have the freaking MVP on the roster. Yeah. They're playing the six seeded Blazers who were one guy, Dame Lillard. Yep. You ought to be able to win that series. Like that's not, an unreasonable request. Mm -hmm. And that to me was when it became free pass time for Michael Malone. Like (laughs) you should be able to have some expectations. And the fact that it was just always none bothered me. And they, listen, they didn't have Val last year. They still had a lot. They had more talent than the Kraken. Fair. So, and they had home ice. So what's the excuse? Oh, we lost one guy. Oh, so you can't deal with any adversity. I don't know. I feel like that adversity was, it was, it was dirty behind the scenes. It was, like, let's be listen, honest. It was, 
yeah, it was different. It's not what you normally yes. see or deal with, but I, I just am I'm kind of out of the excuse business with those two guys, mm -hmm. given the embarrassment of riches they have to work with. They do. I'm on it with Jared Bednar and the abs. Michael Malone gets a little bit more of a free pass from me right now because I do think it was a bunch of senioritis. Like, I feel like they're just like, all right, the playoffs are going to be here before we know it. Like, we just have to stay healthy. We can hopefully roll. Like, I feel like it, they've just overlooked some of the teams, which does come a little bit down to coaching. Like, you got to show up, especially with the number one seed on the line and a franchise win record. Like, come yeah. on. I mean, they tied the record. They did. Yeah, they would have won it if they beat the Spurs. A they should very have set bad the all, team. The all-time record for wins in franchise history is 58 and be the number one seed. Yep. That's what they should be. And they lost to the 60 lost Spurs. Yep. When they had a 23 point lead. I know. I, I just I, I find that inexcusable. It's just, but it, everybody's just gonna say, well, they won 57 games and they're the two seed. Like that doesn't excuse that type of a flop. It won't excuse if they don't go at least to the Western Conference Finals. I'm with you on that. And let's be honest, the West this year, so much tougher than it was last oh, year. Oh, my goodness. Like, yeah. don't expect there to be hardly any sweeps. It's going to come down to six, seven game series probably the entire time. You know what's going to be interesting, too? And this is another Michael Malone thing. And it's, listen, he, I do think to some extent, because he ran the same eight-man rotation every mm -hmm. game last year, he did just kind of roll the basketballs out and say, go for it, guys. <laughs> but he did push right buttons in terms of, setting the tone right remember yep. after game one against the lakers everybody was talking about the adjustments la made yeah and he was kind of mocking the media and mocking the hachimura switch and all the rest of that stuff yep go to the parade he's up there talking a lot of trash and you know the lakers are malone's daddy or malone's their daddy whatever yep. i forget how it works um they're gonna get the lakers in the first round you think so? So you better be ready to back up your you haven't heard the rumors that are going talk. around saying that the lakers are trying to dodge the nuggets they're trying to lose to the Pelicans so, so that they go to the, the second, which just makes me think of Jeff Green saying, don't play with the game. No. You, you can never. You got to go out there and play your best game every single time. Well, then Michael Malone comes out yesterday after the win. I was like, yeah, you, you don't want to tinker with the playoff bracket. I was saying that for years when they were <laughs> trying to tinker with the playoff bracket. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, Malone's such a genius. He, you know, it's just, dodge this team or dodge that team. No, you don't mess with the basketball gods, lowercase g. Yep. You show up and try to win every game you can play. Yep. It's why I'm anti-tanking. It's why I'm anti-trying to manipulate the playoff matchups. For sure. This goes back to 1997, hoping the Broncos got the Jaguars. Well, how'd that turn out? Yep. Like, just don't root for it to go a certain way. Don't try to manipulate the standings. Just go play and try and win, and it'll fall where it's supposed to fall. What's your nervousness level when it comes to your give? I think he's a nine. <laughs> I mean, you're telling you, me him hitting the stick and his helmet and the clear frustration. You're like, ah, oh. yeah, I don't trust that guy at all. I know, but look, I don't either. Yeah, he was not good in the seven nothing loss. Yeah, but they also put up a goose egg. I know. So how he would have had to been fantastic. Like when you lose seven to nothing, it's not just on the goaltender. Well, and Annan went into the game and still gave up three. And so, he was like, bad too. Yep. But the thing is, and I'm actually, I feel like I'm going to get some hate on this. Because again, if you pick on the best players, people are like, well, you're not seeing all this stuff. Devontae's and Kale McCarr have to be better. Like, for sure. The puck's getting back there because of the people that are in front of him. Yeah. If you're just getting peppered. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the team you're playing against has just great opportunities. Yeah. Those are going to get by most guys. You know, were there some soft gold? Sure. Not all of them are like, what could you possibly do? Yeah. But they did nothing as a team that night. I know. That day. Nothing. It was That was embarrassing. And so it was that game and the Nuggets game, it, just both of which were embarrassing in like a 24-hour span. It's so bad. And it's like, okay. And I'm not calling for anybody's head today with my column. Yeah. I'm just saying it's prove it time. Show me you're the right guy for, for the job, if you're Jared Bednar or Michael Malone, that you're not riding the coattails of Nathan McKinnon and Nikola Jokic, and then we're not going to look back in three or four years and say the, the Nuggets and the Avs essentially wasted the primes of the best players in franchise history. I'm with you. Trust me. I get it. And I'm nervous. Me too. I, I wasn't. I'm playoff not really time. nervous. We should be nervous. It's playoff time. I know. I'm not really nervous about the Nuggets, but I'm going to be completely honest. My gut feelings tell me they're going to go back to at least the finals. Which Boy. You have to deem it a success one way or another if they make it all the way. Watch me knock on all the wood. I don't even know where wood is. In you don't think if they play the Lakers in the first round, there's a chance they're eating their words? No. Okay. No, I don't. I'm you know what I think I have learned, though? Don't give Nikola Jokic the last shot. 
Hot take right there, but he's missed two of them in the last, what, four games or whatever? Clippers and Spurs? Yeah. When he had the ball with the chance to go up three, you know, yep. he, he makes that shot. The the fact that they blew the lead doesn't matter. It's yep. just like, man, they made that closer than they needed to. Same as the Grizzlies game, right? Like, how was that game close? Yeah. Nobody really cares because they only got the win. Yep. So... I got, a, I got a senior at home. Then. I know all about senioritis. <laughs> He's done. I'm not sure the last time he went out. to school for a full day. Really? It's just always something. Like what? I don't know. It's testing and then, you know, oh, I'm going to do this and going to do that and senior ditch day. And I feel like there's 10 senior ditch days nowadays. It's ridiculous. And then they do this thing where like they have to like shoot other people in the class with like a paintball or something. If you get them. Then they're out. Did they wear like the floaties and the goggles? I don't know. I'm oh, and he's going out at like two in the morning to get someone so they're unsuspecting. What? Yeah, yeah, because this person went to the Bucky's grand opening, <laughs> so it's like two in the morning. So they planned it to go up to Bucky's, yeah, to get this kid and he out. found out that the person he needed to knock out of the thing was going to be at the Bucky's, so he went to the house, waited for him to come home from Bucky's, and they were unsuspecting. Boom, they're out, and what you have you to win? film it. It's like I think it's money. I think it's like eight hundred dollars or something like that. Which as a senior in high school, I'll probably take. spent like nine hundred in gas to drive all over to get these people. But whatever. But at least, it's but it's fun. pretty cool. I mean, it's it's kind of. I mean, it's kind of fun. I didn't but... do that. But like when I go to the gym, I see people wearing floaties or goggles, and they have to wear it. And if you like get caught, Joey's over here shaking his head. Like, yeah, if you get caught without it, you are out. And we like all hunt each other down to like get pictures and stuff. Huh. It's so weird. I yeah. didn't do that. I didn't do that either. I played, it, it's kind of fun though. Like there, I mean, it's a senior year. Like the la the yeah. second semester has just been goof off time for sure. So enjoy it. I mean, I try to tell them this. Like enjoy it because you got plenty of time to be an adult and have stress and all the rest of that oh, stuff. Isn't that the truth? That's yeah. my old man advice for the day. That's the truth. Uh, we used to play a game where you would. Oh, I don't remember what we called it, but like I remember hiding in people's backyards. Which nowadays, if you did that and somebody saw you. Yeah. One, the cops would be called on you and you'd be lucky if something else didn't happen if you were sneaking around in somebody's backyard. Yeah. I don't know how many like fences we hopped and hid in people's bushes. I know. Because people would drive around in their cars trying to find you. Yeah. It was, it was so, so great. Fun. So exciting. Going out teepeeing. Did you ever go out teepeeing? <laughs> yeah. My joy. mom actually caught a lot of like our friends teepeeing our house. Really? Or they would blow up our mailboxes. Re okay. Now, see, now that's, that's vandalism. Bad. Yeah. But yeah, I probably had our high, like my mailbox three or four times blown up. No kidding. Yeah. Huh. Soda pop and one of those little... You were ticking off the wrong people. <laughs> They're in high school. What can I say? Wow. Okay. North gone over here. Let's simmer down, hey, though. I'm not <laughs> I know disagreeing. Some stuff happened over I'm not there. disagreeing. All right. Um, last one. Who do you want the Nuggets to play? Don't care. You know, Just going back. Care? I'm not tempting the ba basketball gods. Whoever it turns out to be, that's what it turns out to be. Okay. Don't root for the Pelicans, hoping all oh, will get New Orleans. That's a good way to be like, oh, my gosh. How did they lose to the Pelicans yeah. in the first round? I think last year, most people wanted the Avs to get the Kraken. And look what happened. How'd that turn out? So True. we should we should learn our lesson. Absolutely, we'll be playing the Winnipeg Jets. That one is secured. Ooh, it's going to be tough. I had some people that were like, Rachel, Detroit and Winnipeg are kind of close. You're going to be going on up that way. Oh, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how the schedule's going to line up if it would come down to a game seven, but maybe. I it's, hope it's not. that time. Well, now with the Avs opening on the road, there's a chance they're all playing on the same night. It's, it's going to be, be crazy. crazy. We got that. We got the draft. It's going to be a ton a ton of fun the next DenverSports.com. I'm going to have a ton. Um, also, if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we are running a contest right now, which is really exciting. So we want to hang out with you, the Denver Sports family. From now until May 10th, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel for a chance for you to come hang out with us. Philip Lindsay and Zach Bayou you get to come in, see us do a bunch of shows, have lunch with us, etc. extra. It's going to be a ton of fun. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and like as well. So Fun stuff. I'm excited about this challenge. It'll be it'll be cool. How fun would it be to have people come in here? Oh, it's gonna be great. I know. Uh, you know, we 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 know they're out there. We see the numbers. I know. We see the comments. Now someone will come in here and hang out with us in person. Come argue great. with James about Michael Malone and Jerry yes. Butner. So it'll plenty of good stuff. As always, appreciate you guys so much for hanging with us. And we will see you guys tomorrow morning for another episode of Coffee Break and Denver Sports Daily. Have a wonderful one, everybody. Get back to work. Bye.